working. <laughs> oh, it was that like that last time though. No, no. See, the live is mm -hmm. actually this way instead yeah, of this thing. Last time. Well, I didn't know. You said oh, it was that's sideways. Right. Okay, good morning, good morning, good morning. Thank you so much for coming this morning again. I apologize. I, I don't know why sometimes when, when we put the Facebook live thing on, the camera goes, even though we have the camera a long ways, the picture goes like it's here, you know, that typical phone portrait type mode. <laughs> um, so uh, uh, thank you for your patience. While we got that uh, fixed, I had to restart the whole thing. So... That seemed to have fixed it. But thank you so much for coming this morning and uh, worshiping the Lord with us. Um, and uh, we'll be uh, jumping here into the word of the Lord in a few minutes. And, and we'll be closing uh, with a, a song of worship in a little while. But we are thankful, very thankful, that you can come and join us this morning and, um, and worship our Lord uh, together. Um, so... Uh, would you mind that uh, maybe if we bow our hearts in a word of prayer? Lord, this morning, we want to come with a um, heart of thanksgiving and praise. Lord, there's this, there just always feels like this gap. Lord, as I, as I dig into your word, as I study your word, and I realize, Lord, you, you are a holy God, and we stand on the very brisk or the very edge of, of your holiness and it it and we, we start getting these glimpses father of how great you are and, and how holy and majestic you are and and, um, and father we begin to realize our own depravity and um, so Lord and then I realize as someone who's attempting to proclaim the glories of you and the glories of your word father how inadequate I am and how limited I am in my scope and capacity to proclaim your greatness so Lord this morning I come and when Paul was talking to his church to the church at Corinth he uh You know, he mentioned to them that he didn't come in his strength or his might or by his words, but, but by the Spirit. Spirit of the triune God, the Spirit of the, of the living God. Would you speak to us through me this morning? I say to us because, Father, because I need to be spoken to. I'm just like the rest of us who are listening, um, we need to hear from you. So, Father, thank you for all those who have joined. I pray you bless them, bless your word, and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So thank you again for joining us. We want to welcome you. Can you close that door right there? Maybe it'll keep some noise coming out of here. Um, so we are, uh, we have started... Um, uh, we have also started our, you know, as you know, I mentioned last week, we started our, our, our going back to worshiping full time over there in the sanctuary. And um, uh, we also have started up a couple weeks ago, we started up Sunday school. So Sunday school is actually meeting downstairs in the fellowship hall. And, um, and so uh, if you are uh, in the area and, and uh, when you feel ready and safe to come, if you want to come, uh, we do have a joint uh, Sunday school class there, and we also have the youth Sunday school class that's that's uh, meeting as well. And uh, we do covet and thank you for your prayers for that as well. And um, this this um, this certainly has been a very very interesting year without without a doubt. Um, and uh, we wouldn't be here, wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't um, for all the things that have happened. And, and we're hoping that it's going to be a blessing to you and to to um, uh, and perhaps to others as uh, as you as we continue to we're going to continue to do this. Um, now I mentioned last week that it was my hope and my desire that we would be able to actually videotape our complete worship service. So obviously you see that we're not there yet, and um, 
and as this is a whole new project and all the technology is new and very, very time demanding, um, it's just taking a lot longer than I thought I had hoped. I'm, I'm hoping in a few weeks we'll have it ready, but what I will do when we get ready to make that switch, you in between now and then, you'll probably see some test videos going up, uh, maybe throughout the week, testing the system to see if it, to to see if it, if I can get all the sound and the video to collaborate and and work together, so that talking like that, you know, <laughs> where the words are are not mixing up with the uh, with the mo movement of the mouth, right? So um, we need to be testing all the sound equipment over there and. Um, there's some really cool things that uh, we've been able to do and been able to get and that we think that it's going to be really good once we get there. And um, uh, so, and uh, Beth, I did see your comment last week about my voice being low. I think maybe that might be because my mic, I have a tendency to drop my mic back. So I'll try to keep remembering to do that. But thank you for mentioning that. So I'm going to keep trying to, uh, to remember to do that today. So, um, yeah, so I will just be on the face on the Facebook looking out to to see uh, what is going to come because that's where I will post post the updates um, and then uh, each week, of course, the um, they're being uploaded and being uh, put on YouTube as well, and you also be able to go to our our web page and um, and see from there. And we're going to be releasing our web page really really soon, so you'll be able to see our new updated web page. Um, That'll be coming out shortly. So um, we're excited about that. And um, so I don't want to say that we'll have it up next week, but hopefully within a couple of weeks, two or three weeks, maybe we'll be able to be over there, have everything experimented. If not, we'll fall back on this until we get it right over there. Because um, we, we want to be able to worship with us in the whole context of the whole service. And, and uh, we think that that uh, that'll be much more exciting, uh, if, especially for those of you that that um, that want to be here, but that you can't, you know, you can't be here for whatever reason. Um, so, uh, so thank you also for those of you who have continued to give. Um, you know, this giving is a, is an act of faith in in the ministry, and as you give, it allows us to be able to continue to to teach and. Uh, God's word and bring it to you. Um, you know, even just the technology is is uh, it does require you know an expense just to be able to to do that and to to be here. Um, and uh, we got to feed our family. <laughs> uh, but so we are humbled and thankful um, that you are giving to this ministry. It's not you're not you're not giving to me. You're giving to our ministry um, as a whole. And um, so we're thank I'm very thankful for that. And 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 there's ways you can give that are different. You can you can give online through um, through the online giving portal. If you want to send a check, this is the address. You can send it directly to this this address. Um, and so that's that's good news. I do have one exciting uh, connection point that we want to make. Um, so when I say connections, okay, I, I, like I'm saying that in lieu of the word announcements because I don't really like the word announcements. Um, because really, we are the body of Christ, and God has made us to be connected to one another. And so anytime we have something, it's an opportunity of connection, right? We're going to have an opportunity that's going to connect ourselves with our Lord, an opportunity to connect ourselves with each other, or an opportunity for us to connect ourselves with our community. And, um, and so when we talk about connecting with the community, um, October 24th, which is coming up uh, this next Saturday, uh, there is a local church that is going to be uh, sponsoring a, uh, a, a training uh, for a clean out kind of thing. You don't have to have the disaster relief yellow hat, but if you're interested, lunch is provided. Um, if we have a trailer that's being equipped out for that. If you're interested in that, would you call the church and leave a message there and uh, or send an email and um, we, I can give you the details of that um, if, if anybody is interested um, in, in that. And um, so if, uh, so that's it. So I, I want to go ahead and uh, we'll go into to prayer for the kingdom of God and then we'll go into, uh, right into the word. Would you bow uh, with me in prayer? Lord, 
Jesus, you taught us to pray, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When we look at everything that's happening in our world, when we look at the fighting and the disputes and the lying and the deception and the carrying on that's going on, when we look at all of this and we see that, you know, what do we see? We see people with money supporting things that we know that are not right or that are unjust and 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 we think, how can this be? And sometimes we might even be tempted to think, where is our God in the midst of all this? And so we come to you this morning praying in the same way that you taught us to pray. Let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. And as we've been learning what that means and what it means to be kingdom people and to think in the kingdom way, Lord, may it be, Lord, that this becomes the priority in our hearts. We see people, Lord, we see people uh, in our lives Maybe it might be a boss at work. Maybe it might be a principal at school or a teacher at school. Or it might be a, uh, it might be a business owner. It might be a, a, it could be anything, Father. When we see somebody relentlessly pursuing something with all of their heart, our prayer is this morning, Lord. I'm praying this for me, and I'm praying for this for all of us who are listening. That, Lord, that this too would be our relentless pursuit, is that per the pursuit of your kingdom. That this is what we would desire, but Father, this is what you do in us. So, Lord, we come this morning and I pray, Lord, Spirit of the living God, fill in this gap, speak to us. Help us to be more kingdom-minded for the glory of your Son, Jesus Christ, who gave everything, who suffered with a purpose. And Lord, may today be the day when someone comes to know the truth of who you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, um, so as we um, as we go into the Word of God, I want to. Uh, have you ever been in this this scenario? So, you have something. Maybe maybe somebody's given you a gift, right? And it's something that's really precious to you. Or maybe you created something that was really precious to you. Do you ever thought like? Or, or maybe maybe you might be you you're in a relationship that is really precious to you, and then then along comes somebody who belittles you, who talks down to you, who makes fun of you, and makes fun of your ideas and the things that you like. Would you want to tell that person about that precious gift? You know, what's our natural inclination? Our natural inclination is to do what? Is to, is to hide that away because we want, we, we don't want to share what's precious to us with, some, with something that's going to be belittling to somebody else. Does that make sense? Do you see what I'm saying? Have you ever, you ever been in that situation? And I think when we think in terms of the kingdom of God, when we, we look at we look at everything that's happening around us. We look at all of the, the stuff that's going on in our nation, not, not just the COVID, but as we mentioned each week, I know that you're seeing the news and you're seeing all the, the craziness and stuff that's going on all around us. That it's, it's very tempting for us to get caught up in that kind, in, in all of the, 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 the conversation that's, that's happening across our nation. And we, 
we get on one side or we get on the other, and it, it can be very draining and, and leads to a deep, dark kind of depression. And, and it leads to, and it just sucks the life out of our soul. And, and in the midst of that, for whatever, whatever side that you might be on, you know that there's this yearning or this desire for righteousness to be done. Or there's this, this yearning that the, the things that are wrong might be made right. And, and we've talked about this in some of the past messages. I mean, that's exactly, as we've been going through this kingdom series, that's exactly how many of the disciples felt. Um, they, they were looking for the coming of the kingdom. They were looking for some of the injustices and some of the things that they did not like and some of the things that they didn't believe to, to come to fruition. And they were looking for that in the coming of the Messiah. And we, and we saw... Uh, last week that there was some things that they were confused about. We'll get to, to, to that to more in that in a second. But but I wanted to continue with this idea about that there are misunderstandings about the kingdom of God. And today we're going to look specifically at the ancient mystery. Uh, I love the History Channel, <laughs> right? I love uh, Discovery Channel and and you know there's always these shows about you know the mysterious ancients and the mysterious shows about the aliens in the past or you know the ruins or things like that and um, this idea of ancient right something being long foregone way before us um, something that we you know there's this distant connect and and that there is there is when we think about the kingdom of God it's not the ideas of the, of the kingdom of God are not something new, but they're actually ancient. That's what we're going to be looking at. And, um, and we saw last week we talked about one of the misconceptions is, is that the kingdom of God is not an observable organization or an institution or a government, but rather it is composed of miracle transformations of hearts of people that become passionate for Christ and obedient to his teachings. That's what we that's what we learned last week. That's one of the misconceptions. We we often want to turn to institutions or or sometimes even people, right? And we talked about how even in in regards to the politics, right? Our temptation is to look at 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 one of the two candidates as the deliverer for to bring us out of this muck and this mire. Yes, there will be consequences to what the nations choose to what the nation chooses. But it, it ultimately, God will use it for the ushering in of his kingdom. And so as believers, we're understanding that no matter who is in office, that God is orchestrating and working all of this to bring about this miraculous change in hearts. So we're not looking to people or to institutions or governments. And, and, and there's, a, there's a lot of misunderstandings when it comes to the kingdom of God, right? And... Uh, uh, one of those, um, when we think about that, uh, uh, people, you know, we, we, we tend to think in terms of something concrete, which we talked about last week. And, and Jesus kind of very spoke vividly to that in Matthew chapter 7. And this is an interesting thing that he says. He says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. What? This is like... Uh, like, there's going to be people who are doing things in the name of the Lord, who are going to be doing things in Jesus' name, and they're not going to get in heaven? Yeah. Um, he says, but only the one who does the will of my Father. You see why Jesus says, Our Father who art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So when God is creating people whose hearts, well, remember we talked about how obstinate as people we can be. And that it is our inclination to want to do our own thing. And so the miracle is that God actually takes people whose wills are their own and changes them to become after his own will, after his own heart, after his own 
desire. And um, so he's saying, listen, not everybody who's coming and, and doing things, you know, listen, we're talking about church orders. People are doing church things. And they're going to say, but I, got, I spent my whole life in church doing all these things. And Jesus was pretty clear. Look what he goes on. He says, on that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we drive out demons in your name? And do many miracles in your name? Look at all the things that we've done for you and for your kingdom. And this is the sad part, he says. Then I will announce to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you lawbreakers. What is he talking about? He's talking about the hearts of people who have been doing things in religious and a religious nature for their own edification, for their own support, for their own glory, for their own program, for their own thing, and not for him. They never came to that place where they confessed the brokenness that, of, of, of their own sin. They've never come to that place where they have experienced the, the mourning or the humility that we've been talking about. And so in their own minds, their hearts are filled with the pride and uh, the prejudice and the arrogance and, uh, and their own. They're building their own kingdom. And Jesus is saying, listen, I didn't know you. I didn't know you. And, um, and so today what we're going to be looking at is this, is that the kingdom of God is an ancient mystery hidden out in the open, precious to those who know it, foolishness to those who don't. This is interesting, right? The idea that something is hidden out in the open. How does Jesus continue to teach his ministry and to continue to teach about the kingdom of God, he does it very publicly, and he does it very openly. And yet, the whole idea, or the whole concept, is hidden from the eyes of many, many, many people. And so, as you saw earlier, we're going to be reading from Matthew chapter 13, verses 10 through 17. Uh, so, if you want to go ahead and turn in your Bibles, and uh, while you're turning in your Bibles there... Um, I'm going to go ahead and stand, and I'm going to ask if you would go ahead and stand in honor of the reading of God's Word. And again, I will remind you that um, there's not, uh, this is, we're not, uh, there, we're not making a law that says you have to stand. It's just a reflection of the heart. If you're not able to stand, don't feel guilty in any way. Um, just examine your heart. Are you standing in honor and reverence in your heart for Him? You see? So this is just an outward expression of the inwardness and the honor that we want to give to Him. And so that's what's most important is the examination of your heart. And um, let's uh, read the word of the Lord. Starting in verse 10. Then the disciples came up and asked Him, Why are you speaking to them in parables? He answered, because the secrets of the kingdom of heaven have been given for you to know, but not, but have not, it has not been given to them. For whoever has, more will be given to him. And he will have more than enough. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. That is why I speak to them in parables, because looking they do not see, and hearing they do not understand. Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled in them, which says, you will listen and listen, but never understand. You will look and look, but never perceive. For this people's heart has grown callous. Their ears are hard of hearing, and they have shut out their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and turn back, and I will heal them. Blessed are your eyes because they do see, your ears because they do hear. For truly, I tell you, 
Many prophets and righteous people belong or long to see the things that you see but didn't see them. To hear the things that you hear but didn't hear them. Lord, bless the reading of your word. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you so much. I do appreciate that uh, your willingness to stand and in honor of his word there. And so, so let's uh, let's put this in the context here of this passage. Jesus is um, uh, Jesus has been uh, teaching uh, again about uh, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, and uh, and one of the ways that he does that very often. Uh, he, did, he does it through the teaching of parables. Uh, what is a parable? A parable can be sort of thought of as a story. Uh, it can be sort of thought of as a, uh, um, sometimes I've heard it described as like a riddle in a way. And the particular one that he is talking about prior to this context, the one that, that provokes the question, is the parable of the sower. And, uh, and, and I'll just read it to you quickly. It says, Consider the sower who went out to sow as he sowed. Some of the seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Other seed fell on the rocky ground, where it didn't have much soil, and it grew up quickly. And the soil wasn't deep. And since the soil wasn't deep. Uh, but when the sun came up, it was scorched, and since it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell on thorns, and with the thorns came up and choked it. Still other seed fell on good ground and produced fruit. Some a hundred, some sixty, some thirty times what was sown. Let everyone who has ears to hear. And then this, this is, so Jesus is teaching about the kingdom of heaven, right? And, and so this is what is provoking this, the question that the disciples are asking. So that's why when we look at verse 10, they ask him this question, why are you teaching in parables? And so he jumps in and he answers. He says, because the secrets of the kingdom of heaven have been given to you to know, but not has not been given to them. So, he and this is interesting, right? He always thought he says, because the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. Now, it's interesting that he would use that word there. The word there is mysteria, right? In in the in the uh, in the Greek, which it means this. It means a, a secret. Well, that's no secret, right? A secret right or a secret teaching, um, a mystery. And you can, you can even look in there and you can see the word mystery, right? Obviously, we know where we got our word mystery, right? Um, but it also carries the idea of something that's transcendent, something that's coming down. It's a reality above all of us. It's an, an ultimate reality, so to speak. So there is the, this, this ultimate sense of, of, uh, of, of truth that, that is, it, it goes beyond what we see or think or feel um if you you remember if if you ever had the chance to read the chronicles of narnia uh when when aslan is talking about uh, what he's about to do for edmund um and the, the the witch you know she's the evil person she says you know, she's trying to use the law to her advantage and keeping edmund as a slave and uh and, and aslan he knew about an ancient law that went back since the creation of Narnia. And he said that is if someone innocent lays down their life um, for someone who is guilty, uh, then then they would not, and, and, they are, and their offering is on the stone table, then they, would, they wouldn't be held bound to that death, right? And, and so it's kind of cool. You know, he, he goes, because Aslan obviously was the beginning. If you go back and read the stories, you know where the witch comes from. She comes from another world and, um, but she was also a created being, and and so she doesn't have the depth of knowledge that Aslan has, and uh, but you just feel the mystery of this deep truth that he is able to make this ultimate sacrifice because he understands and he knows this this deep truth, and um, and so when we're talking about this idea, this what Jesus or what. Uh, uh, what Jesus is saying is that there is a there is a secret that uh, about the kingdom of heaven, and it is a, a precious thing, and and it's this idea that we realize that not everybody is privy to the information about the kingdom of heaven. So when we look at the things that are happening in the context around us, listen, when we see evil happening. 
our tendency is to want to go, oh, I can't believe they would do that. Sometimes we might even say that about ourselves. Oh, I can't believe I did that. But the reality is, is that because we are by nature sinners, we fall to our natural responses. It is only when we become unnatural, when we become like we talked about in the beginning of the series about the being born again and being born of the Spirit that now we are able to respond to the Word of God and do those things because He's changing, he's changing our wanting or He's made a, a, an incorruptible seed born in us that is able to change or to be able to understand these kinds of things. And so because we've been taken out of that, now we come to a place where we see things from a different perspective. So we can see all the craziness that's going on around us and we can say, well, I see why they're doing these things and we are able to mount up and say, listen, we know that there is a kingdom that we are living for. There is a kingdom that we are striving for and, there, and, and there's things about it that the world just does not know. They, will, they don't know it. They won't be able to find it on their own, which is one of the reasons why we want to be able to continue to provide this teaching for, for you uh, to, online because we want to create as many possible chances for people to hear this the good news about this. Um, and uh, I, I like what, what Paul, Paul addresses this. He's talking to the church at Corinth, right? The church of, uh, who, who are young, struggling believe, believers and they're still living you know, in their fleshly ways and, um, and they're, they're starting to buy into some of the other false teachings of, some of the other people are coming along and, 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 he, and he says this he says I came to you in weakness and fear and much trembling which is interesting right because here's Paul right remember Paul is the guy that was um, who was once against Christians he stung Christians um, and uh, he hated them uh, and then Jesus confronted him on the, on the road to Damascus and, and he realized at that point that he was that he was persecuting the very Jesus or the Messiah that that he thought that he was defending and so he came to this place of, of brokenness and uh, and so whenever he would take that gospel to people he recognized you know I was once there where you were so I'm coming to you realizing that it's only by the grace of God that I'm here and so I'm coming to you in weakness and fear and in much trembling you see, because Paul was a kingdom person and he went through that process of that brokenness, that process of the mourning over the sin, the process of, of, the, uh, of the humility. And then God began to work the newness in him. He says, my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of wisdom. In other words, I'm not coming to you with, with all kinds of, you know, Thing, you know, I'm not coming with my own ideas, but he said with the demonstration of the Spirit's power. Who's the Spirit? The Spirit is one of the, the Godhead, Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of the living God. He says, I'm coming to you in, in demonstration of that power. Why? So that your faith might not be based on human wisdom, but on God's power. See, that's where things break down for us so often is that we want to try to usher in the kingdom of God in our own wisdom, in our own, pro in our own priorities, and in our own plans. All right, we're going to have this program. We're going to have this church. We're going to have this building. We're going to have these funds. Man, if we're going to make it, we've got to have this, and we've got to have this, and we've got to have this. And he's saying, listen, I don't want you to come to God on that basis. I want you to see, I came to you broken. I came to you in the power of the Holy Spirit. And he says, we do, however, speak of a wisdom among the mature. But listen, not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. In other words, you know, he lives in a time, right, when the Greek influence is strong and, and uh, the Roman Empire is strong and and all of the things during that day, he's saying, listen, I'm, I'm not coming to you 
with the wisdom that you can find in the in the Greek libraries or in the Roman libraries. I, I'm not I'm not you can't find it in books. And the same thing is true for us. In the midst of everything that we see happening right now, we're not going to find the wisdom about the kingdom of God in political parties. We're not going to find it in the books and the libraries in our culture, or it, and we're not going to find it in the ideologies of man. He says, on the contrary, we speak God's hidden wisdom. God's hidden wisdom in a mystery. Think about this. So God has a wisdom that is actually hidden from the world. It is a wisdom, and look at this last part because this is so important. Here it, is. it is a wisdom God predestined before the ages for our glory. Where does this wisdom come? This wisdom came before creation. God knew all along what he was going to do and what needed to be done. God had set a plan in motion. It was ancient. That existed even before man. It was a plan that no one else could have dreamed of. This is the ancient mystery. He's talking about this. And Jesus is saying the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. These are ancient things. And they're hidden. And see, we, we look at verse 11. He goes on and he says, These secrets, they have been given for you to know. He's talking to his disciples. He's saying, you know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. They are, are given to you so that you can know them. They don't know them all at once, right? But they, they're, they're learning. They're, they're, they know the, the main one, or at least they think they do, and they, and they will at that point, but at a later point. But he says, he says um, but it has not been given to them. In other words, the world will not see this precious truth. Remember earlier when we talked about, you know, you had that something precious and you are hesitant to share with people who might belittle it or who might damage it or who might, you know, just treat it with disdain. You see, and we're going to talk about why that uh, in, in a little bit. So he goes on, and for, and for whoever has more, will be more will be given this is a, like he's saying listen when you when you learn about the secrets of the kingdom of heaven obviously it does something to us it changes us and he says he says when you know that you will be blessed you're going to get more it, it, it's not going to stop coming and he, he goes on and he says you will have more than enough as a matter of fact in other words, you're going to keep knowing the truth about the kingdom of heaven and it's going to become more and more and more evident to you. So, it's this idea that if, if you are a believer in Christ and if you read God's word, right, every time you've probably discovered this phenomenon, right, every time you read the word of God and you come back later and you read it and you discover more. Just as I've been going through my own quiet times this this month, I'm going through passages that I have loved all my life, and I've been reading them, and, and as I'm writing them out, I've, I've actually been writing them out. I, I got a journal bowl from my daughter. She gave me this journal bowl, and I've been writing out these scriptures, now, and it's like I'm seeing things I've never even seen before just, just by that process, and I'm understanding more about the kingdom of God, and he's making more and more and more complete, and that has been... God's desire from the beginning always is that he has this plan. It's an ancient plan. But he wants to make it known to his people. When we read, for example, in Proverbs chapter 25, verse 14, it says, The secret counsel of the Lord is for those who fear him. That idea of fear fear, that theme of fear that runs throughout scripture, that idea of reverence. We understand the holy nature of God. And so there is a fear that turns into a high reverence for him and a love for him. And so that love is 
based upon the fact that when, when we see how much he loves us, and so he loves us, and so when we, when we trust him in that way, he reveals his secret counsel, his secret plan. He reveals his covenant, right? That's what he says. There. That is the heart of our God. That is the heart of Yahweh Elohim, right? So God's desire is for his people to be in abundant know about his kingdom. And, and that's where we find ourselves. If, we, if you are a believer and you, are, have, you have trusted the grace of Jesus Christ, then this becomes a blessing for you because you're, you're learning more and you're understanding more about his kingdom and, and your heart gets more excited about these truths. But there's the other side of that. He goes and he says, but whoever does not have even what he has will be taken away from him. So this idea that, listen, if, you, if you're not believing, even what little bit you have, now all of a sudden is going to become farther and farther and far. Your understanding of the kingdom will become farther and farther and farther and farther and farther away from the truth and he says that is why in verse 13 that is why I speak to them in parables you see when we do not want to receive the truth if our hearts have not been through that process of brokenness to be able to receive the truth we will never get there the opposite is actually true we actually become more ingrained in our pride, more ingrained in our thoughts, and more ingrained in our prejudices, and more ingrained in what we think is the truth. And so he says, that's why I speak in parables, because they do not see. And hearing, but, but looking, they do not see, and hearing, they do not listen. The idea, right, of, you ever been in a conversation with somebody, and you're telling them something, and, and you're saying the words, but they're not hearing what's behind the words. Because we're, we're, we all lack, right? What We all lack in, 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 uh, in our ability to express ourselves. We have these things that are going on in us and our emotions. And, and we, uh, over time, as we grow, as we understand, Damn the world and we start putting the pieces together and we start being able to express ourselves and we hopefully grow in our ability to be able to express what's going on inside but then we have we speak with people um, you know in, from another perspective and and they may not see or, or understand what you're saying and likewise the same is true of, of when you're listening to them you're not hearing or understanding the things that they're saying and so there's this idea, even naturally, from the human perspective, we have a limitation with our ability to be able to understand even one another. And what Jesus is saying, listen, they're here and they're hearing me teach about the kingdom of heaven, but they don't understand the kingdom of heaven. They don't want to see it. They don't want to change. And he actually makes a a reference to a prophecy in Isaiah. Uh, in Isaiah, he says uh, in verse 14, Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled in them, which says, and, and he actually goes and he quotes directly Isaiah chapter 6, verses 9 through 10. Now, I want to put this in the context. So we're going to jump back a previous few verses. We're going to look at a couple verses prior to in, in Isaiah chapter 6. Uh, one of those is that, uh, uh, so Isaiah, who is a prophet of the Lord, is now caught up and he is with the Lord in the presence of the Lord. God is a holy God. And so Isaiah comes in that and he understands the discrepancy between him and God. And look what happens, how he feels. That he says, woe is me, for I am ruined. I am desolated. I am standing before a holy God. He says, because I, because why? I am a man of unclean lips. This is a prophet of God. And he recognizes 
that he is a sinner and that the word with some of the words that he says some of the, there's corruption even comes out of his mouth he says and not only that not only am i a man of unclean lips but i live among a people of unclean lips because and because my now he says my eyes have seen the king the lord of glory i have seen that the lord of the armies now i am ruined i am in utter desolation See, this is part of what we want to pray for, right? For, for God's presence to be in our nation. Because when we're there, we, this, you see that, that, that process that, that Isaiah is going through, the process of mourning over his sin, the process of the brokenness that he's going through and the, and the humiliation. But then quickly, very, just as quickly as it starts, God brings and shows his grace, you see. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, and in his hand was a glowing coal he had taken from the altar with tongues, and he touched my mouth with it, and he said, Now, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is removed, and your sin is atoned for. So God makes a provision for him while he's there. That's the nature of our that's what God has done for Isaiah, but he's also done it for you. He's also done it for me. We can talk about more of that in a second. But he goes on in verse, in verse 8, and he says, Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Who will I send? Who will go for us? You see, what was God looking for? He was looking for someone to go to the nation of Israel to deliver them a message. Why? Because the nation of Israel had records of God's word. They had God's word. They had encountered God's presence on many occasions, going all the way back to the very formation, uh, going all the way back even to the beginning, right? And, he's, and, and yet the nation of Israel is rebelling against the Lord. And so what he's saying is, Isaiah, I need someone who will take this message to the nation of Israel. And Isaiah, of course, he says, here I am, send me. And he replied, go, say to the people, and this is where we jump back into verse 14. This is where uh, Jesus is quoting what is happening uh, to Isaiah. He says, you will listen and listen, but never understand. You will look and look, but never perceive. Right? This idea that they, 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 they saw the prophet Isaiah. He was all the time, over, all over the place speaking, but they never understood what he was saying. Um, they, they heard what he was saying, but they never understood. They just they didn't catch what was going on. And he says, why? And he clarifies in verse 14, 15, he says, for this people's heart has grown callous. In other words, he's telling him, Isaiah, you're going to go speak to these people, and you're going to tell them my word, and they're not going to respond. What? <laughs> what are you talking about? He says, their ears are hard of hearing, Talking about the hear, you know, they're, they're, they, they don't want to hear the truth. They don't want to hear that they're turning and that they're rebelling against the Lord. They don't want to hear that. They've shut their eyes to the truth. You see, and it, and it can be, but it all started at the core of the heart, right? I, I want what I want, when I want it, how I want it. And so there's no response to that. He says, otherwise... They might see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and turn back and I will heal them. Now, at present, that looks like he's saying, like, it looks like what he's saying is that uh, there is, uh, what he's saying is that uh, if, if he goes out, I'm going to go out and preach this so that they, that, because I don't want them to hear. But, um, in the heart sayings, Lavi Press says this. He says, uh, "What he asked this, this question? What is his prescribed duty, Isaiah? That right to prevent from hearing and understanding his message, and thus make it simple for them to repent and escape destruction that would otherwise overtake them? No, indeed, 
if that impression is given, it is simply due to the Hebrew tendency to express the consequence as a thought, uh, as I mean, as though it were a purpose. In other words, uh, in the Hebrew language, the way it talks or portrays itself is saying that, like, it looks like the purpose I'm doing is so that they won't hear. But but you see that what what he's saying is is no his this is like like I I want this. We know that God's word says he's not he's his desire is not that anyone should perish, but that, but that all should come to repentance. That's that's his heart and his desire. But our hearts are so hard. People's hearts and they don't want what they don't want. And we can't convince them of it. And it's only God who can do. That's why we say this transformation of the kingdom of God. This is the miracle. When we talk about, when we talk about wanting to see uh, the kingdom of God coming in our nation, we're not praying that it's not necessarily that one particular leader might be the one that ushers in God's kingdom. We don't know that. We may say, oh man, this candidate would be better for our constitution and be better for this and better for and more likely we're going to come to God under him. But we don't know that. God might use the other one to bring us to our knees in humility and brokenness. We just don't know what his plan is. You see, because what happens right after this is God pronounces judgment on the nation of Israel. And it leads them to a place of brokenness and it leads them back to a place of purity. Back to a place where they, they're, they, just about everything they have is taken away. And God did that to bring them to that place. And that was his desire. And so Isaiah, Isaiah's experience was replicated by Jesus during his ministry. Because it was even during that time that the hearts of the Jewish people were so set in their pride and prejudice that they would not that they could not perceive the good news. <laughs> they could not note. <laughs> I was accidentally typed not twice to put the E at the end of one of them. But they could not perceive the good news of Jesus' message. They just couldn't. Because their own pride, their own religion was so much in the way that they could not hear what he's saying. And so Jesus is teaching in these parables. Well, here's part of the reason, right? He's preaching it out in the open. If they had really completely understood everything that he was saying at that moment, they would have killed him. And he wouldn't have finished his ministry on the earth, right? So this was, I mean, but so that's part of the reason why he, out in the open, he's teaching the truth about the kingdom of God, but it's it's out in the open. That's why I talked about in the, the beginning in our main point is, it's hidden in the open. Jesus is clearly teaching. And those who belong to him, those who are his, hear those truths. And they grow more and more and more and more in those truths. And they become, uh, they become more and more kingdom-minded. But then the opposite is true for those who are not. Those who are against his truth, Hate him even more. They they think, well, you're you're an idiot teacher, and they you're gonna and and they're gonna dig their heels in deeper. <clears throat> D. A. Carson puts it this way. He says they will not understand what they are hearing, which evidently means they will have their minds so made up, and they will be so set in their ways that when they hear the word of God that challenges them to new thinking. And new ways of living, they simply do not understand it. They interpret what they hear in terms of what they always thought and have done. So it will be with what they see. Look at this. There will be no shortage of things they see. But there will be no perception. Listen. God is doing his work for his kingdom all over the world. <clears throat> People, will see it. People will continue to see it, but they will understand it. They will Jesus. And your desire to, and to, to repent, listen, there. Step into that. Repent and come to him. 
Because listen, if we if we continue to turn that off, we'll lose our ability to be able to perceive the truth. We don't want to be in that position where our eyes are opening and we're seeing the things that are happening around us, but we're, we're not, it's not making sense to us. Or where we're hearing the truth or being able to, listen, how many people have sat in church services week after week, month after month, year after year, and have heard the gospel truth, and yet they've not been changed by it? Because there is no perception. You see, in this whole idea of people not understanding the kingdom of heaven, it wasn't new in the early church. This was a common issue. Because not only does Matthew quote this passage from Isaiah, but Mark quotes it in Luke chapter 4. Luke quotes it in chapter 8. John quotes it in chapter 12 and and, and uh, Luke quotes it again in chapter 28 of Acts. Because even it was a problem in the early church. The reality is this. And then Paul says this very well. He says in his letter to the Corinthians. For the word of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. To people who are caught up in their own self. When we talk about the cross, it's foolishness. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, he says, In their case, the God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel, the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. You see, that's the fundamental, Jesus is the corner, that is the fundamental foundation of the good news is that Jesus Christ is God. That Jesus Christ is from God. That Jesus Christ is part of the triune nature, the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. That Jesus Christ is the one, the cornerstone of God's hidden mystery from the beginning of the ages. He says, for we are not proclaiming ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your servants, for Jesus' sake. It's not about us. It's not about our kingdom. It's not about what we're trying to do. It's just about him. He says, here's the good news. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of God's glory in the face of Jesus Christ. This is, the, this is what he's saying. The hope He's shining this light in our heart where it once was dark. This is what we are praying that people will see. We can't make them see that with our own, in our own strength. We, we can only proclaim and share the word of God just like what I'm doing with you right now. And I'm praying the spirit of God shines his light so that you can see the glory of God in his son Jesus Christ who came and lived on this earth and then died on this earth and was buried on this earth but because of the ancient law because of the ancient truth that existed death could not hold him because there was no sin in him this is the ancient mystery, you see? Blessed are your eyes because they do see and your ears because they do hear. It's good. So what is the ancient mystery so we are blessed to see? Let's put it another way. You remember when Jesus was asking his disciples and he said, who do people say that I am? Well, some people say you're John the Baptist, some say Elijah. But Peter said, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. You see, the, the term Messiah was the one that they knew would be the deliverer, the one who would come and set the, the people free, to set the captives free. They knew that and they understood that. And here was Jesus' response. He says, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, because why? 
flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father in heaven. This wasn't your idea, Peter. This was the ancient hidden wisdom that God showed to you. Now, I want to dig just a little bit more into this. And I want to jump back to the passage in Isaiah. You remember when we were reading that passage and God was asking the questions, who will I send? Who will go for us? Is it not interesting that he uses the word us? This is one of those Old Testament glimpses into the plural nature of our Lord, into the, the, the three in one God, who will go for us. We get a picture of that in this incredibly famous passage when Jesus is being baptized by John. So there is Jesus, and when he went up to immediately, uh, he, Jesus was baptized and he went immediately up from the water and heaven suddenly opened for him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove coming down on him. So there's Jesus, there's the Spirit of God, and then there's a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. In this picture, we are getting a glimpse of heaven. It is that intimate relationship that has always existed between the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And it is this ancient trinity that Jesus told his disciples and he prayed for us. I said, Father, I'm praying to be one as you and I are one. So here is the ancient secret. Are you with me? Follow with me? Let's, let's jump to Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 53. Here's the ancient secret. But he was pierced because of our rebellious heart. Our rebellion. He was crushed because of our iniquities. He was punished for our peace was upon him. He went through the brutality of the cross so that we, he went through unpeace and unrest so that we could have peace. And why? And we are healed by his wounds. There is so much packed in this whole passage of Isaiah. But here Isaiah is talking about what Jesus is going to come and do. And Jesus Christ is taking this punishment so that we can have peace. And we read in another passage later in verse 10. He says, it, it pleased God to crush him. Because of what was coming, and then, and look at and look at look what happens in, in verse uh, eleven. After his anguish, he will see the light and be satisfied. After Jesus goes through this time of 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 brutality, and after he's beaten, and after he's died, after he's buried, he's going to be with his heavenly Father. When he rises again, he goes and he sends him to be with the Father. And he is going to make things right. He says, for by his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many. By what Jesus Christ has done, by this ancient knowledge, many will be justified. And he will carry their iniquities. This was Isaiah thousands of years ago, prophesying about what Jesus would come and do 2,000 years ago. And he says, in verse 17, he says, Truly, I tell you, many prophets and righteous people long to see the things you see, but didn't see them. To hear the things that you hear, but didn't. What is he talking about? He's talking about all those prophets who knew that God was going to send a deliverer, someone that was going to come and make things right. Take Abel, for example. When God told them to offer up a righteous sacrifice and he did it, and what resulted was his death, his brother killed him because he didn't like the righteousness. 
Or take, uh, or when you take, for example, take Noah. When Noah is building an ark, and they, they've never have experienced hardly even rain. You know, like mist coming up from the earth, and, and he's saying there's going to be a worldwide flood, and, and, he, and he does this because he knows that through him there's going to be delivered, but he doesn't, he never sees it. But what about Abraham? God says, through you, the nations will be blessed. You're going to have a son, and, he, and he's 100 years old before he gets his first son. And Sarah, thinking, how, can she, she's thinking, how am I going to bear a son when I'm old? And a lot of so many problems when we read in, in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 11, verse 13, it says, All these died in faith, though they had not received the things that were promised. He said, Abraham died. He didn't. He didn't see. He knew God was going to do what he was going to do when he said, Go offer up Abraham as a sacrifice. He knew, God, your word is for sure. So if you say to do it, you must be you're going to raise him up from the dead because this is your word. And so they, and then he dies, right? And he says, but they saw them from a far distance, greeted them, and confessed that they were foreigners and temporary residents on earth. This whole idea of saying, listen, we as kingdom people, we understand and we recognize who Jesus Christ is. And now we are, while Abraham and all the people in the Old Testament, they, they were looking forward to this day when, when the God of glory, they didn't understand exactly how it was going to all work, but they were going to, God was going to reveal this ancient secret through Jesus. And now he's there walking in their midst. These forefathers didn't get to see it. Listen, now we are looking back on that. But we're looking for the coming of, of his new kingdom. That's what we're going to be looking for. Now we're looking forward in faith in that same way. And we're going to talk about that more early in a couple of weeks. But, uh, but we're understanding that this is, is the promise that he's saying. Let's take, this is a precious truth that had generation after generation and age after age, people have been waiting to hear this truth. And now, right now, here thousands of years later, this truth is coming to you right now. This precious ancient truth. So just as a reminder, the kingdom of God is an ancient mystery hidden out in the open, precious to those who know it, foolishness to those who don't. Are you at that place today where you're hearing the truth? Would you respond? Let me just pray for you. Lord, we just thank you so much for your word, which is truth. We pray that, uh, Father, if there's any, Father, who are listening this morning, um, that they would hear and that they would know. I want to just sing this one song. Can you give me that sheet right there? I'm just going to sing an acapella. I want you to listen to the words. It's just would you... I'm going to sing it once so you hear the words and then once so you would, <clears throat> would you pray with me the second time? It goes like this. Open my eyes, Lord. I want to see Jesus. To reach out and trust Him. And say that I love him. Open my ears, Lord, and teach me to listen. Open my eyes, Lord. I want. Just sing it, but as we sing it, can actually pray it. Open my eyes, Lord. I want to see Jesus to reach out and trust him and say.
say that I love Him. Open my ears, Lord, and teach me to listen. Open my eyes, Lord. <coughs> Lord, hear our prayer. Open up our eyes. Open up our ears. Let us not become callous to your truth, but make us tender and broken before you. In Jesus' name, amen.